This is the continuation of lesson 8.1, right triangle trigonometry. We're going to find sine C, and so you want to make sure you've identified angle C. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so make sure you identify your hypotenuse so that you don't accidentally use it for adjacent or opposite sides. And then because we're doing opposite of angle C, it's going to be the one directly across from it. So we're going to have 16 over the hypotenuse is 34, and so they're both even, and so you're going to reduce that fraction, and so that's what sine C is. Now, if you are, if you are doing a different question, so if it said sine A, then that's going to be different because you're going to be going from angle A and the side opposite would be 30. The hypotenuse is still 34, but it's going to give us a different ratio. So again, they're both even, so we'd have 15 over 17 instead of 8 over 17, and so that's going to be two different things. So make sure you're paying attention to which angle you're starting from. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of turn this around and we're going to find the value of x. So we're going to have something different missing. We're going to round to the nearest tenth, so make sure that you round your numbers. So look at what we have. We have this angle. I have the hypotenuse. I don't know what it is, but that's what my x is. So I'm going to need to use hypotenuse. And then I've got the side that's across from my angle, so that's going to be my side opposite. So which ratio uses opposite and hypotenuse? You do not want to choose any of the reciprocal ones. So we don't want to do um, cosecant because that's not going to be something that's on your calculator. By the way, on your calculator, you've got your sign button. And then above it, it says sign negative 1. That does not mean the same thing as cosecant. So please don't misunderstand that. We will learn later what that is for, but it is not for that, so don't do that. Um, you're just gonna either use sine, cosine, or tangent. So because sine of angle x or whatever is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, that's the one I'm gonna use. Now, the angle that I have, it's not x, it's 71 degrees, so I'm gonna put that in here. And the side opposite is 10, and the hypotenuse is x. So this is just an equation that we can learn how to solve. We know how to do this. So we can multiply by x on both sides. So I have x sine 71 degrees equals 10. And then to solve it for x, I'm going to divide by sine 71. And so x is going to equal, that's what you put in your calculator. Make sure you're in degree mode. So I always have one or two students that they do their quiz or they do their test and they're not in degree mode and they end up missing everything. So make sure that you've done that. I'll try to remember to remind you, but if I don't, it's going to be on you. So I'm now going to type this into my calculator. So I'm going to type in 10 and then divide it by, and then we're going to do sine. So the button that says sine and then 71 degrees. And so when I do that, I'm going to get 10.576. Since I'm rounding to the nearest tenth, I just need to know that the 7 turns that 5 into a 6. So 10.6 is my answer for the hypotenuse. Now think about what we know about right triangles. I know the hypotenuse has to be the biggest side. So it's good that it's bigger than 10 because if it was less than 10, we would know that that was wrong. Now since I know two of my sides, what if I had to find y now? I could use the Pythagorean theorem if I wanted now because I have two of the sides. You could also use other trig ratios to find that as well. And so we'll do that in just a second. Even though this isn't actually part of the problem, I'm just going to talk about it anyway. Since your angles add up to be 180 in a triangle, if this one is 71 degrees, then this one has to be the complement of it or whatever it takes to get to 90. And so that would be 19 degrees. And so if I wanted to find that side right there, I could say sine of 19 degrees is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, which I just found out was 10.6. Now that is a rounded number, so this is going to be approximately equal to. But on that one, you could just multiply by 10.6 on both sides. You wouldn't have to do any dividing, so you could just say 10.6 times sine 19 and you're going to get whatever y is and so you could check that let me just type that in my calculator and so you're going to get 3.45 so it's about equal to 3.5 
And so if I was going to check my work, which again, not a bad idea, but remember that I've rounded these numbers. And so it's not going to be exactly equal to what it should be. So if I say 3.5 squared plus 10 squared, it's going to be really close to 10.6 squared, but I'm not expecting it to be exactly equal because I have rounded my answer. So this comes out to be 112.25, and then 10.6 squared is equal to 112.36. So that's really pretty close, and since I know I rounded, that explains why it's different. But that's just an example of how you could use trig ratios. There are some other ways you could do it on this problem. Um, I'll just go ahead and show you. If you wanted to, you could say this is 19 degrees. So I could say from the very beginning, I could say cosine 19 degrees is equal to the aside adjacent over hypotenuse. So I could do that one and use cosine. I would get the same answer. So just some options there. Okay, so number nine, let's just set it up and then I'll let you put it in your calculator and everything. But if we've got this angle, notice that I do not have the hypotenuse. So I cannot use a ratio that has hypotenuse. And sine and cosine both use hypotenuse. So tangent is the only thing I've got left to choose from. So it's opposite over adjacent. So from this angle, opposite is x and adjacent is 20. So I'm going to say the tangent of 57 degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent. And then to solve that, I would multiply both sides by 20. Remember, that's 20 over 1. So I'm going to have 20 tangent 57, and then that's what you're going to type in your calculator. And that gives us 30.79. And so we're going to round it to be 30.79. 797. Seven. So if I'm rounding the nearest tens place, that 9 is going to make that go up. So we're going to say 30.8 approximately. And so that's the length of that side. Um, you could also say that the complement of 57 would be 33 degrees. So what I could do is if I wanted to, I could say tangent 33 is equal to opposite over adjacent. This one would actually be harder to solve because your variable's on the denominator, and so that makes it you know, an extra step because you're gonna have to multiply both sides by x, and then you would have to divide both sides by tangent 33. But I'm just saying that there are other ways to do it. So there's not just one right way to do this. You can get it a couple of different ways, but there's only gonna be one answer. And so if I did this 20 divided by tangent 33, I'm actually going to get the same thing, 30.797, so it's going to be about 30.8. So either way you do it is fine. It doesn't matter. You probably want to look for the one that's the fastest or easiest. Okay, for the last couple of questions, find the area of the large triangle. So remember that the area of a triangle is one-half times base times height of a triangle. So looking at this picture, I don't know the height, and I don't know the whole base. I know part of the base, but not all of it. And so this is 44. That does not automatically make this one 44. Because if you look, like that's not divided evenly. So they're not going to be the same. And so I have some question marks here. I also don't know the height. And so what do I do to find that? So what we're going to do is we're actually going to divide this into a couple smaller problems. And so if you look at this triangle right here, I actually know enough that I could find the height. So if I call that x, so I'm going to have my angle, 37. This is the side adjacent, and this is the side tangent. So I could say tangent 37 is equal to opposite over adjacent. And I can solve that one and find the height of the triangle. So pause the video. You find the height of the, video, or of the triangle, and then come back and make sure you've got the right one. Okay, what I got is I got 58.389. Now, looking back at the directions, it says round the intermediate values. What that means is I'm going to round my numbers in the middle of the problem. So this one, I'm going to round it to the nearest tenth. So 58.4 and use the rounded values to calculate the next value that we find. The reason why those directions are important is because if you use the 58.3899, if you use all of those decimals, you're going to get a slightly different answer. So just to keep us all on the same page and so that we're consistent, I'm going to say round those intermediate values to the nearest tenth and then use the rounded value 
to continue on. So the height of that triangle is 58.4. Now the next thing I need is now I need this piece right here. So now let's concentrate on this triangle. Okay, so now look at what I know. I'm going to erase this stuff so it's not in the way. But looking at that triangle, I've got the 30 degrees, and I've got the side opposite and the side adjacent. So again, tangent, but this time it will be 30 degrees, and side opposite is y over adjacent is 58.4. And so to solve that for y, I'm going to multiply both sides by 58.4 over 1. And so I'm going to type in my calculator 58.4. And I'm going to multiply by tangent 30, and I'm going to have 33.7. So y is going to equal 33.7. Now I'm not done because my goal was to find the area of the triangle, and so now I have enough information to find the area, but I haven't found the area yet. So I'm going to write 33.7 right here. So the area of my triangle is 1 half. Now the base is going to be 44 plus 33.7, and the height is going to be 58.4. And so that's what you're going to put in your calculator. So you can just go ahead and use like 0.5 because we know what that is. And put all of that in. Make sure you've got parentheses around your sum. And what you should have for your area is you're going to get quite a large number. So the area is going to equal 2268.84. And we're supposed to round the final answer to the nearest tenth. So it's just going to be 0.8. It's unit squared because it's area. And that's going to be my final answer. Okay, last question. Find the missing sides of the triangle. So we're going to find this one and that one. So we cannot use the Pythagorean theorem because I only have one side. So you can't say like x squared plus y squared equals 10 squared because that, I mean, there's a lot of things it could be if you think about it. Um, sorry, sidetrack here. This is actually a circle. Remember it's x squared plus y squared equals 100, so that means a circle has a radius 10. And so what I'm looking for, like it could be any point on the circle would actually solve that equation. So any of those points, so we can't solve that with, with just one piece. So what I have is I have these angles. So this angle is 65 degrees, and this one's 25. Notice that they add together to be 90 degrees, and so they're, so they're complementary. And so let's just concentrate on one letter at a time. It's not going to do me any good to say tangent 65 is equal to y over x. That doesn't help me because I still have two variables. So I need to concentrate on something that's only going to give me one variable. So what if I do 65 and the side adjacent and the hypotenuse? So I would have to do, if I'm going to do adjacent and hypotenuse, that's going to be cosine. So I'm going to say cosine of 65 degrees is equal to side adjacent over hypotenuse, and I can solve that by multiplying both sides by 10. And so you're going to have 10 times cosine 65. Now just in case you are not aware, regular calculators do this. You don't have to have a graphing calculator to do this. So it does work just fine without a graphing calculator, but good luck doing it without a calculator. When I was in high school, we didn't have calculators to use on something like this, and so we had tables in the back of our book. And I'll, I'm going to actually see if I can find one and attach it to the video just so you can see what it looked like. But we had to look it up in the tables in the back of the book every single time that we needed to find a cosine or a sine or a tangent. It was a pain. So be really happy that you have a calculator. Okay, now to find, so this is 4.2. So to find y, I can use 65. If I use 65, that's the opposite. So I would say sine. 65 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. I could use 25. So if I did 25 and I'm trying to find y, that's adjacent. So I'd say cosine 25 is equal to y over 10. Um, I don't want to necessarily say tangent, even though I really, I could. I could say tangent 65 is equal to opposite, which I don't know, over adjacent, which now I know is 4.2. The reason I don't really want to do that is because I don't really want to use a problem that I've already found and rounded to find another one unless I absolutely had to. So I probably would not be using that one. So go ahead and do that last problem and you want to check and make sure that you're right. Okay, so here's an example of a trig table that would be in the back of our math books back when I went to school. And so if I wanted to find, say, cosine of 65 degrees, 
I would have to look down here and I'm looking for degrees and I have to go, oops, I can't do it. I have to go to the next page to find 65 degrees. So can't do that one. So I'd have to be looking at the 25 degrees back in this problem. I'd have to do something with 25 degrees. So if I said like sign 25 degrees, then I could do, I would be looking at 25 degrees. So I come down, it's right there. And then sine is in this first column, and so that would be 0.4226. And so that's what we had to do every single time. So that looks like a good time, right? Okay, you should be ready now to do your assignment for this lesson.